over here. Oh, this video is going on too long. I'm so sorry, guys. I sure do hope that y'all are hanging in there with me. All right. So let's see. I have a stack of papers. All kinds of goodies here. So let's try to get through this quickly. We all pretty much know how to do a signature. Um, and there's lots of videos. If you don't know, there are a lot of videos out there. So I have a piece of vellum here. Bunch of coffee dyed, but I try to go different papers. And these trims. We have the um, music sheet on the front, so you definitely want to bring that to the interior as well. So I want to trim off because it is torn there. Trim that off and, and start with that. I think I want. This is mulberry paper. And I was so lucky to get this fine, but it was in the beginning of me getting into junk journals and didn't realize what a good find I had found. And it was a big unopened pack at an estate sale for $2. And there were two packs and I only got one. And I wish I had gotten both, of course. This one here has writing on it. It's a little vintage piece. Right, throw that one up. Again, I'm just trimming off the papers right now, the ones that are cut and whatnot. I'm just trimming off at the bottom before I get to the sides of them. That's a beautiful piece. Here's some piano paper, which hopefully will work good in here. This, I think I only need one side of. We will figure that one out in a minute. These, oh my gosh, I love using these bags. I use these bags in everything. The, um, from the pharmacy, from the deli. Um, I dye them. I can't see the scissors I'm looking for. Um, coffee stain them, I'm sorry. Here they are. Um, you can put them in one of two ways, which everyone puts them in this way, where you fold them and put them in the signature. I also love putting them in this way, especially in 
and TN style, and then you have um, a small skinny tag place or, or some hidden goodies. So if I do a thumb, and of course that can be covered, if I do a thumb hole, then that will be done. Otherwise, it'll just be this. Nine times out of ten, I'm doing a thumb hole, though. But this one, I want to decide if it's going to go up or sideways. So, we have a couple of doilies here. Alright. So, let's see where we're at. Not to find... paper to cut to size and use for a template. The easiest. I know my measuring is not conventional, but what I'm doing is I'm bringing it just inside. Just inside of the stitch line. Okay. that over make sure you're good yep make sure see that can be cut back a little bit oh, let's go this way that needs to be cut back a little bit for the closure and yes yeah, I'm guesstimating because that's how I roll. So that's perfect. So now this will be our template. And we can knock out the rest of these pages pretty quickly as far as measuring and cutting them. I'm not getting too quiet. I'm sorry. I just realized that. And hope that you don't do it crooked. I should have put a piece of paper on the other side of the mulberry paper. And of course, cut the paper to any length. It does not have to be all the same length. Not at all. And I fold each one separately, either now or after they're all cut. At least if I do it now, I can see if I did it crooked. And this is coffee dyed vellum. Um, vellum is not the greatest to be coffee dyed. A lot of people don't like it, I've noticed. 
but I do. I like the feel of it. And, you know, makes a great place for a pocket. I have not tried writing on it. Imagine you could with a pen. Alright, let's grab these three. Where's my template? And if I plan on knocking out a lot of these, your one template page, you know, you could just keep one. Um, for the sizes of the pages here. And then it would be even quicker. And like I said, you want to also, you know, or can change up. Like, I don't like what it says on the bottom of that. I'm going to cut it off the bottom. It just, that was sent to me. And, um, they obviously printed it off online. But it didn't have any writing on the other side. So it's perfect for paper. This is an echo dyed sheet. That I got from somewhere and then printed out. I don't like the unevenness. that one. I'm getting too quiet. I'm sorry. We're almost done with this phase of it. And then it'll be done. And I will turn this the right way. I will do my best to edit a lot of this out so the video isn't so long. pages. I like a variety. That's our... Now how did I get long ones? That long one when I used a template. Quick and easy fix. We're 
getting a good amount there. Oh, excuse me. Use your bone folder, crease it. And then let's go this way with this smaller one. And this is got some coloring dye in it. And I'm thinking that was Kool-Aid. I bought some Kool-Aid to try that. I haven't done Avidado yet. And here's a cute little baby doily. So this, okay, y'all didn't see that. Um, we're also going to find a book page to put in there from Edith Holden Books. Alright, now these are very flimsy as well. So we're going to fold it this way. This is the piano page. Oops, sorry guys. Let's put that there. Oh, I hate that I have to cut some of that off. Piano page is not easy to come by. Probably not for any of us. So I think I'm going to have this go up and down. Um, oh, I already cut the bottom, didn't I? Because it's perfect, but I'm going to close up one end. And you can see how it opens. So, I think it'll be perfect, and it will be fun that way. And the other one, I turned it horizontal, so let's go vertical. And, um... I just love these sandwich bags. From uh, this is sub from the grocery store. From Publix, all of you uh, Southerners, Easterners that are familiar with Publix. All right. So let's see what we have here. I know there's one more sheet we need to get from the Edith Holden book, the center. But let's see how we like what we have. We have different layering effects, different paper. And let's move that one to the center a bit. And let's just get one from the Edith Holden book, and then we will be good. Let's try to find one. Hopefully. We used yellow, and we used purple. Now let's go with this one. It has yellow on one side and yellow and purple on the other. I just dropped a bead. I feel like I'm going to cry using it to eat a folding book. Alright, so there we are with that. I think we'll skip this because I think it's thick enough and I did do this 
I did want this purple mulberry paper in here. So should we go that way or that way? This way. But I don't think it mulberry paper should be on the outside. So maybe... Right there would be good. And we can see that peeking out. And the last thing is, maybe one of these. I did take the time to do it. <laughs> Want the flower one since it's either folded. This was embossing on the um, Sizzix is what I did here. And I know we have everything in the center. And I guess I could put it here. Sorry guys. put it there or like this. How about this? I need to put the delicate part at the bottom. Do that piano paper it rips so easily. There, I think I am in love happy. So let's take a look what we find in the signature. I love it. And this one's thick too. I like a lot of paper in my journals because I want to have them around for a while, right? So that has the purple and the yellow in there. So I think we're good. It's time to bind. I can... Alright, where'd I put it? My loop. Okay, it's over here. I thought I was losing my mind for a minute there. So let's bind that in, and then we will get this in, the magnet in, and do the closure. I know, there's a lot left, isn't there? Also, look at this cute little one. Things that I did earlier. So, and I already have everything ready, and I think one of the beads dropped, there it is, from my dangle. I need to get some of this stuff out of my way, guys. Oh, you should see my floor. No, you shouldn't. Never mind. <laughs> All right. So this is, you can use anything. Um, this is um, waxed. Excuse me. So this is fairly easy. Just doing a three whole pamphlet stitch, so I'm just punching my holes in, and I'm just looking on this side because I don't want to go through words like I didn't want to go through March. And um, 
um, like I said, I won't take the time to show you how to do this, obviously. Y'all probably know how. And I'm the last person you'd want to be teaching you. But for those of you that don't know, there are a lot of good videos out there. I'll show you how. You see, y'all are making me nervous again. Let me lose my footing here. Hopefully, I got them all. Where is? Okay, we lost one. That should have went through the middle. Crud. Crud, 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 crud. Did you see the one purple one didn't get caught in the middle? Sometimes you have to slow down regardless. So we want to make sure that purple one is also yep, it's just right underneath where it should be there. Are y'all really laughing at me now? <laughs> I'm just making sure. All right. You just want to hold your tail there. Usually I don't have this much trouble. It goes right in, typically. And I have a feeling that purple one needs to be punched again because I moved it. I'm just going to double check. Yep, it does. Perfect. Yay! Almost, Jay. Try not to rip the paper. I knew this video was going to be long, guys, but not this long. There. We are out. Make sure it's nice and tight. I want that string a little longer. This is what I love about the wax thread. When you have to make adjustments like this, it's much easier. Um, you want your tails on either side of your center string. I like to get it nice and tight. And I probably won't finish this up all the way with you. Um, I'll get you through. 
I mean, as far as the decorating and maybe hanging the beads, we probably don't need to do that together. I've definitely taken up a lot of your time if you're still with me. Oh, I love it. I love these colors. So here we want to glue this. My, you want to make sure that you have it right enough room here to hold punch and do the eyelet and you have enough room um, here. Hello, so I got this done and hopefully this long video won't take too terribly long to upload, but I wanted to show you the final product. This one became a little bit of a gator mouth. So here we have the cover, which I am so happy about. I love the purple elements. And then inside, we do have the magnet closure. And the tag that we had done together and then our little flip so we can make this gator mouth even bigger this is the bag that looks like I still have a little bit to do but where we went vertical instead of horizontal on so we have tags um, in both sides both ends and I do have thick tags. I was using a box that I cut up. So those um, tags are a bit bigger. We have some beaded fold in there. And we, again, here's from what we used of our Edith Holden book, I wanted to add in, um, you know, what we used as much as possible. So here's a couple of tags with what piece of our um, that. Um, what we used on the front pocket there a little bit more Edith Holden page same with there and of course I took it from how do I word this? The correct place. So nothing is ripped up as far as the writing in that aspect. I hope that made sense. I know it probably didn't. Um, so here we had this and I threw this in and page from Edith Holden and put a little pocket back here with a little tag. That can go in here, or it can go in one of the vertical slots, because you can't add two more in there. And you can slip papers in here if you need to keep papers in there. And I just had to use that somewhere. Here are our center beads. Whoops. I love, I love having these long because it can be used for a bookmark. You know, to, depending on what you use this for, you mark your spot, you can use it going up that way. I don't see too many people doing that, but I do. I love it. We have a little quote here. The earth has music for those who will listen. I thought that was pretty appropriate for an Edith Holden book. And then um, we have a tag here. I don't usually put too many tags in a TN. This one I did. I got a little carried away. This is a Edith Holden belly band. Some writing space on the back. It was just too pretty not to use. Not to use that. I just love love that. use this other one just to put a couple of little little tickets maybe you'll have some finds you can put in there but just 
used up our space. And then here's the other one. And I use the other paper. And this is a trick that I learned, I want to say, from Pam at the Outpost. I know I'm saying it wrong. Outpost. Um, using your, your um, fine line Bic Sharpie and putting lines on there. I love it. I love the effects of it. And then we come to the back and we have this tag the green side can be written on. So I just wanted to show you that, add it to the end of the video. I'll let you guys go. You can see it's a gator mouth. <laughs> Did not intend that, but I love her anyways. I love the, uh, the purple of it and the whimsy romantic closure. So thanks guys. I appreciate all y'all, you know, hanging with me and um, hopefully you were able to work with me. I'd love to see the ones that you make. So till next time.